welcome back to my channel. I am going to make a recipe that's been asked for a lot of times and it's my grandmother's tea cakes. She used to make these tea cakes for us when we were kids all the time. She'd make them and she'd put them in a dish towel and she'd cover them up and she'd put them in the bowl and we would run in and out of there all times of the day and we'd eat tea cakes. So, what I'm going to do is I've got all of my um, things that I need to make it with and I'm gonna get started. So let me set it down so that you can see what I'm doing. The lighting I hope is very good. So, this is actually, like I said, this is actually my grandmother's recipe. And she used to make this recipe, like I said, when we were little kids. And um, you're not going to be able to see me a lot. Let me see if I can get this up so that you can see me. Uh, there. There. I think that's a little better. You can see me a little. <laughs> okay. So what I'm going to do is get started on this recipe. You always add, when you're making any type of cookies, cakes, what have you, you always add your sugar and butter first. So, I have a cup of butter that I've had sitting out so that it can um, get room temperature. So, I'm going to open this up and put this into the bowl. And it's funny because... During the, the time of um, my grandmother's baking, when I think about it, I never saw her use a mixer. So you know what? For this recipe, I'm not gonna use a mixer. So, what I'm going to do is put the butter in, and I'm gonna, it's sitting, set at room temperature, so it's going to be real soft. Just gonna kinda break it up a little bit. And then to the butter, as you can see, I'm going to add sugar, which is about two cups of sugar. I already pre-measured because I didn't want to take a long time to, to do this. But And then to this pre-measured sugar, I'm going to add my eggs, which is going to um, give it a chance to mix. So let's put one egg. and two eggs. Now, of course, you can do all your mixing if you'd like to with a, um, with a mixer, but I'm just, I'm not using a mixer because I am trying to get the feel of how my grandmother did it without a mixer. So, sometimes when you use farm fresh eggs, you get specks in them. Uh, that out. Okay, so I'm going to use a whisk. Uh, a long time ago, they would use uh, um, just a spoon, really. So I'm going to mix this until it gets really softly mixed, but mix just enough. And yes, like I said, back in the day, they mixed everything by hand. Yeah. Since this is a back in the day recipe, I'm doing a back in the day mix. So let's mix this, take this out and clean it out. This is really a good cookie. If you have kids, oh my God, you can put these in the cookie jar and just let them eat as they wish. You can use them. I've used them for um, Christmas cookies. They can just be used for a lot of different things. So let me clean this out. There's a delivery guy outside the door and I'm just kind of watching to see if I have anything coming from Amazon. So. I have my oven preheating 
at 400 degrees. Let me set this in there like that. There. And see how it just creamed together? You always want your butter to set out. Actually, I had this sitting out um, from yesterday, and I got up and thought, oh, it's too hot. So, to this, I'm going to add three teaspoons of vanilla. As I said, the only vanilla I use, the only black pepper I use is Watkins. So, let's put in three teaspoons of vanilla. And I'm telling you, this is the best vanilla. It, um, as you can see, I use it a lot. It gives your foods such a great flavoring. So let's put this in. Let's go. One. Two. Three. Mm, if you could just smell that. Oh, it smells so delicious. And it looks like I'm about out, but I don't run out of it because I keep some upstairs. I have a place that I keep extra. So, I'm just mixing this together so that the, um, it all comes together there. So, what I'm going to add now is baking powder. So it says to add three teaspoons of baking powder. So what I'm gonna do, I've already measured out my flour. So clean off my measuring cup, measuring spoon. And this is my measured flour. And I'm going to add, what was it? Three teaspoons of baking powder. So I'm adding it to my flour because you really want to add your dry ingredients and your wet ingredients together. So there's my three teaspoons of baking powder. And then I'm going to use a teaspoon of salt. Which is one teaspoon of salt. So, when I was taking cooking class, you were supposed to mix all that stuff together. But, what I'm going to do is take my old butter knife here and just kind of slush it around, get it mixed. It's not gonna mix perfectly, but once I mix all this in the bowl, it's gonna be good. Okay, so, now that my wet ingredients is all ready, I'm going to add to all of this a cup of milk. Let's move that over there. Let's get my milk open. Let's get my milk open, open. So, this is my measuring cup that I'm using for my milk. And it says to use a cup. So here I go. With one cup of milk. And that's right on the money. Okay, so let's put the milk back there. Let's close it up. Let's sit it down. And now what we're going to do is mix all of these ingredients together. Oh boy, they're all coming to the party. So, let's put in a little bit of flour. I would say maybe half of the flour. And then put in half of the milk. And then just stir it around a little just to get it mixed a little bit like I said you could do this whole a whole lot faster with a mixer but because I'm making an old-fashioned recipe I'm not using it so then I'm gonna put the rest of my flour in the rest of my milk let's let this stuff sit over here and what I'm going to do, which is something some people are going to do that I do, I'm gonna go in with my hands and mix my cookie dough. You know why? Because that's the best mixing mechanism you can have besides a mixer. 
cup. Then it gets all really incorporated and mixed and all that stuff. So let me clean off my spatula here. Now I'm gonna tell you, my sister, bless her heart, she hated to stick her hands into cookie dough or any kind of dough. That used to just gross her out. So I'm using gloves because once I get finished mixing, I want um, to be able to take the gloves off and my hands are clean. So, if you have kids, this is perfect. They would love to do this. And you know what? Honestly, I think this is the best way to mix your cookie dough. And no, I'm not being very clean with it, but I'm getting it mixed. So, I'm just mixing and mixing. And these are called, I remember when I used to make these, when I was at home, I would ask the neighbors, would you like some tea cakes? And they would always say, you mean the kind that grandma used to make? Yes, ma'am. So, I'm going to get this all mixed up. Which is already mixing up. Get this all mixed up, and then when I come back, we're going to be ready to put them in the oven and bake them. So, to that I say, I'll be right back. Okay, I've got my dough all mixed, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to scoop out some, like so, put it on a greased cutting board, if you'd like, or just your sink, whatever floats your boat. And um, you can roll it out with a roller, if you'd like. Or you just pat it out. It works the same, really. You pat them out to a, uh, I would say about a one inch thickness. It would be just as if you were making biscuits. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, um, this is the way my grandmother used to do it. She used to get the jar. And she put it in the flour to coat the sides, or else you could sprinkle flour on top. And you just cut them out, like so. Now my pan, I, I um, sprayed them with cooking spray so that they don't stick. And you can make them as big or as small as you'd like. I'm going to put these on the cookie sheet and then what you do is you take that same dough, get it together, roll it into a ball, sprinkle your board, and here we go. We're ready to do another set. So I'm just going to roll it out a little bit, like so, flip it. Sprinkle a little on top and cut them out. So what I'm going to do is finish cutting out and then I'll come back to you once I get them in the oven. Okay, I have these all ready to go into the oven and as you can see they're pretty big but you can cut yours to the size that you'd like. So what I'm going to do is put these in the oven at 400 degrees for about 15 minutes and when they get done I'll be back with you okay I'm back so the tea cakes are about ready and I'm going to take them out of the oven and sit them and let them cool a little bit but before I do that of course I have to have a taste so let me get them out the oven Okay, so here's 
one pan. And here's the other pan. I have a couple of more to make. And, um, but these are it. And they look just exactly how my grandmother used to make them. Sometimes people sprinkle nutmeg on them. I've never been fond of that, so I just eat them like this. You can have them in the morning with your coffee, or you can have them with a glass of milk. I'm gonna pour some milk. I'm gonna put that there. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to do, is break a piece. Mmm. Mmm. Hot. Just like my grandmother used to make. Mmm. So, share in the comment section. Let's get down. Share in the comment section any memories you have dealing with tea cakes. dealing with tea cakes. If your grandmother used to make them, if your auntie used to make them, whoever used to make them, share in the comment section. And what I'm going to do, in honor of my grandmother and the way she used to store her tea cakes, I'm going to put them in a bowl with a dishcloth, the way she used to do. Here's to Grandma. Like, share, and subscribe to this video. Thank you.